No matter how impressive a 3D model is, it is never truly complete without textures. And to add textures as a 3D artist, you have two methods. Traditional texturing methods, and the other is texture painting. So this got me thinking, which one is actually better? And what are the differences between them? Or maybe at the end you will need both, and there are times and situations where you will need one over the other. You see, in traditional art, they often say brushwork is part of painting, just like spelling is part of writing. And if we are following the same logic, I would say that texture painting is just a part of texturing. And texturing actually is a big umbrella term that covers many disciplines to add detail to 3D models with images, which includes vertex painting, procedural texturing, and of course, texture painting. However, it got so popular that it became its own genre. Now, when people talk about texturing, the first thing that comes to mind is either applying pre-made textures to a 3D model, which you can call texture mapping, or the alternative is painting the textures yourself, which is called texture painting. The original texturing technique was pioneered by Edwin Catmull in his 1974 PhD thesis which is called a subdivision algorithm for a computer display of curved surfaces. And it was refined later by Blaine and Newell in 1976. The main idea is to break down a 3D object into smaller pieces, called UV maps, which I'm sure you heard of. So, as an artist, you can add images to these 2D surfaces. This gives the 3D model a richer look and feel without having to model any extra details. And as you can imagine, it wasn't really commercially viable till the 90s, when texture mapping became widely used across many sectors, following the advancements in both software and hardware, such as Autodesk 3D Studio Max, Maya, Lightweb 3D, and the increasing power of game consoles like the PlayStation and Nintendo. Talking about movies, I love the new Dune movies, which I can't get enough of. I actually watched them multiple times, and a lot of scenes in the movies were stunning, but also kind of basic. And throughout that, I was thinking, can I make that in Blender easily? And to my surprise, Darren created an amazing class called Masterclass for Beginners, where he recreated three shots from the movie. All of them were about the arrival at the Rackus sequence. The shots look simple, yet very cinematic. You can grab Darren's class on Skillshare. And if you don't know what Skillshare is, then you are probably living under a rock. The biggest online learning platform with hundreds of classes in every category, like VFX, illustration, modeling, painting, and so on, and everything else in between. Darren already released the second and the third part, I mean of his class, so you can follow along or pick a different class. The first 500 people to click the link in the description will get a one month free trial of Skillshare, which you can use to follow this class or any other class that you want. So click the link in the description and start learning right now. Now back to the video. I remember when I first got into 3D art, at first, texture mapping was great, but once I got my hand on the other tools, it just didn't do it for me anymore. Is it worse? Not really. Well, we will get into that in a bit. At the time, there was kind of a form of 3D painting, but it wasn't directly on 3D models. You see, before the 2010s, professional 3D artists weren't painting directly on 3D models. Rather, they were painting the textures in software such as Photoshop, where they will create the textures with all the maps like diffusion, color, specular, metalness, and everything in different layers inside the software such as Photoshop. And later this method became obsolete with the invention of other software such as Substance Painter and Mari which became the mainstream method in the 2010s when Mari was invented to do VFX work, and then Substance Painter followed for video games and real-time productions. And to this day, they are still the standard for texture painting software. These tools hit the 3D scene when the industry needed them, and at the time when physically-based texturing was becoming the norm and GPUs getting more powerful, which is very convenient. 
Essentially, texture painting is a process of painting textures, colors, and surface details into a 3D model, or a 2D surface as it updates in real time on the 3D model. But generally speaking, it is painted directly onto the 3D model to give it a realistic or stylized look, and as a cherry on top, it blends classic painting skills with mathematics. The core idea is to use a series of brushes similar to what you would find in software like Photoshop. And brushes such as soft brushes, hard brushes or shapes like logos and patterns of dirt, rust, paint leaks or any brush that you can imagine. You can use these brushes to layer textures on your model. For instance, you might start with a metallic base using texture projection interestingly enough. Then you can build on top of it by hand painting details or blending it with another texture, a grunge map, a mask, you name it, whether photorealistic or stylized. Additionally, you can paint different maps separately, such as adding height and normal details or painting roughness details with the ability to further edit them later on. Or you can use stylized brushes to manually paint something that falls more into the artistic category. On a side note, things in nature are pretty random, right? And honestly, in my opinion, it is very hard to do things the old ways like when using Photoshop, to paint every little speck of dirt and scratch on a 3D model. And that is why texture painting software come with procedural workflows that use algorithms to help you with the process. And one of the best examples of these is the use of smart masks and the materials of Substance Painter. Smart masks can create texture and effects and blend in between textures, such as automatically adding dirt, rust, and scratches. They use predefined or procedural patterns that can be edited however you want as well as automatic detection algorithms to detect different features on your model, such as edges, crevices, and surface variations to see where to put the details like edgeware. Besides, they have adjustable parameters to tweak many settings like intensity, scale, and blend modes to change the texture appearance or generate variations. On top of this, you can find generations like bricks and different patterns, and if you are lazy, you can use smart materials, which are in a sense, a pre-made collection of smart materials that you can drag and drop. For example, dirty metal or old wood. But with all these features, does it mean that texture painting is better? In a way, I want to call a comparison between texture painting and traditional texturing or texture mapping a fair comparison. However, it is still important to explore and compare where each technique can be used more effectively, hence why we are making this video. On one hand, texture mapping is extremely easy. You just need to grab an image, like a picture of a dirty air conditioner, slap it on a barely modeled cube, and voila! You've got yourself a photorealistic model that you can put in the background of some building from a distance. Besides, it also allows for the creation of high-resolution textures that can provide a lot of detail without actually doing much, other than maybe looking through a texture library or moving the UV islands around. On the other hand, pre-made textures might not capture highly specific details or artistic elements which are meant to visually communicate something or tell a story, which is one of the main reasons why texture painting was invented in the first place. You can directly paint over a model, adding any amount of detail, in addition to any type, however you want. For example, you can add a specific logo, blood or dirt in a particular area to show certain damage or rust, dust, you name it so it gives full artistic control, which can be only limited by your imagination. It also allows you to create many variations of the same textures, thanks to its procedural nature. Plus, it offers immediate visual feedback as you can paint directly, making it easy to make adjustments and refinements rather than creating a texture in Photoshop where you would be guessing how it would look. In addition to this, it reduces issues with UV seams and texture alignments. However, on the other side of the spectrum, it is harder to learn, more time-consuming, and more hardware-demanding, which can impact the performance if it is not optimized. Based on that, texture painting looks like a better choice. It is basically texture mapping, but with a ton of more tools. So a better question might be, do you always need to use texture painting? And the short answer is no. 
If it is a general asset that would be used as a random prop in the background, or just a random building, or maybe a wall, or something in a video game or movie, the traditional texture methods would be more than enough, hence why it is still used till this day. However, if it is a hero asset that would be the main part of the project, or if it is an asset that the player is gonna interact with or see closely in a movie or a video game or maybe an animation, you will need to add specific details and a lot of customization to achieve a higher degree of photorealism, or maybe stylized details, hence using texture painting. In other words, texture painting shines for highly detailed, customized, and generally more realistic assets, while traditional texturing is suitable for smaller or generic assets. And I see this used a lot, especially in ArcViz, for creating walls, floors, and small assets. This means that it is up to you to choose which one you would be going for depending on the asset or the project at hand, especially the scope of the project, or even just personal preferences. And there you have it guys. I hope you found this video useful and informative. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Also, please subscribe to the channel to receive more videos like this. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next one.